my machine shop friends. Welcome to another old steam power machine shop. This is a channel, if you haven't been following it, that I put together a while back to simulate a, about a 1925 shop, job shop that uh, uh, did work for hire in a small town before there was municipal power. And uh, I got some clips today for you. Uh, of some gears that I had to make for a antique gas pump, gasoline pump, and uh, so I just want to thank everybody for the, your support and patience and uh, comments and uh, we'll get right to the job at hand. We'll talk to you later. So now I'm setting up the dividing head uh, for 12 divisions to cut 12 teeth on this pinion gear and uh, I'm using my trusty Henry Ford trade school shop manual this is a 1934 edition and uh, the dividing head they're showing in the book here is almost identical to the one that I'm using and most of these dividing heads for general machine shop use are 40 to 1 ratio on the crank to the uh, spindle shaft. So uh, the formula is uh, 40, let's see here. This is the formula right here. 40 over the number of teeth that you want to cut. So we got 40 over 12. Well, if you take that fraction and reduce it, you get 3 and 4 twelfths. Right? Oh, 24, 36, 40, 4 twelfths. Yep. So, you take that fraction there and you mess around with it, like, uh, just ignore the three for the minute, uh, and make it like eight, if we multiply by two, that's eight, 24, or double it again and make it 16, 48, you see what I'm doing, just multiplying the top and the bottom by the same number until you come up with a number on the bottom that is the same number as a row of holes that you have on your plates. So I've got four plates total. Uh, there's one in the head now and then I've got these three and uh, on the last job on an earlier video I wrote down all the numbers because they're kind of hard to see on here. So here's the four plates that I have and here's the number of holes on each one. And I've got one uh, plate that has a 24 hole circle. So we'll use this one then. So it's three and eight, 24. Four twelves, eight twenty-four. So it'll be three turns plus eight holes on a twenty-four hole circle. So I'll get my twenty-four hole plate mounted up on there and show you how it goes. Okay, so uh uh, other information we need to know is what's the outside diameter of the, of the pinion gear going to be. And uh, to work the formula backwards, the outside diameter is equal to the number of teeth plus 2 divided by the pitch, which is 14 divided by 8, which is inch and 3 quarter, right on the money. And uh, the other thing is the depth, the whole depth, that's the amount that you plunge the cutter down into the blank to make the tooth. Uh, that information is usually etched right on the side of the cutter, but if you have to figure it out, it's uh, this constant 2.157 divided by the pitch, 
in this case it worked out at 0 0.270 and that's what's on the side of the cutter okay since the last job on the uh, uh, 1895 Brown and Sharp here uh, added a little attachment <clears throat> something that Tom and I have been working on and uh, he's finished it it's a these are support arms for the overarm support and if you look in the old catalogs of old milling machines and almost every illustration you see these arms slotted arms on here that tighten down and support help support this end of the overarm in almost every case these things are lost they're never with the machines they're never you never see them used they're just yeah.
Mitch Cut, last 2000. This is a 1953 Dodge Flathead 6 block that I'm born in the front shop. Uh, it's going to be 60 over and uh, I'm doing it in three passes, a 30, a 20, and a 10. And uh, this is what the tool looks like. Set it for the second pass. It's two and a quarter to begin with. Now it's two, two inch three hundred. This is the setting tool. And that will bore a two inch three hundred hole. almost silent. I'll follow that with a uh, uh, an 8,000 cut. That'll get me within about two and a half of where I want to be. And then I'll hone the last two and a half out in the honing cabinet. Okay, I'm getting ready to cut this gear <clears throat> on the 19 uh, or 1895 Brown and Sharp mill. Uh, Tom and I worked on this setup and uh, didn't have much time to take video of it, so I'll show it to you now before we get started. This is the old part and because I don't have a chuck for this uh, dividing head, this is actually a large end mill holder. Uh, it's one inch. So this part of my blank is actually one inch. So I've got it set up in here, and in order to get the teeth going, in order to cut the teeth the right direction and have them end up on the left side, I had to mill from right to left instead of left to right like I usually do which meant that I had to run the milling machine in the reverse direction which has no reverse so <clears throat> it was either reverse the engine and run the whole line shaft backwards or else make up a cross belt which I did to run the milling machine backwards and if this works 
I'll keep this cross belt rolled up on the machine somewhere for reverse and direction. But the next blank that I make, I have to actually make two of these. The next blank that I make, I'm going to machine it different so that I can put it in the other way around. So this is a, a one-time experiment running this machine backwards. <clears throat> We're all set up with the cutter and uh, Tom is firing today so we got a full head of steam and when we're going to take the first pass of a hundred thousandths and end up on a mark that matches the old gear for length here and then when I get to that point I'll rig up uh, a stop on the table so that I can duplicate it on each one of the gears.
with the extra rigidity that these braces have, I found I can do this in two passes instead of three. I'm doing 170 the first pass and 100 to finish up. So that saves a lot of time. Next to the last cut. Here's what she looks like. All I gotta do now is put a keyway in here. And that one is done. The reason I didn't machine both of these at the same time is because I thought maybe I'd learn something on the first one that would save me some trouble on the second one. But it looks like my plan worked out as planned. Hmm. Okay. Here are the three gears, finished and ready to go.